so every sin you have ever committed you don't mention that sin to be justified you mention Christ to be justified he said by his knowledge many shall be justified because he will bear their iniquities come on you did the sin but the day you have knowledge that is ready to bear it that's the day you'll be justified I know you have been the horrible person you have been a very terrible person you have been the worst person the family knows you have been the worst person that your community knows but he says that by his knowledge many people shall be justified and this is how it's going to happen the more they know him the more he bears their iniquity father we give you glory speak to your church and deliver your people Amen. from every form of bondage that even as you showed up here right now thank you that you have lifted burdens that we never thought of we give you the glory now give us light help us be to behold your face even the face of the knowledge of the glory of God that we shall be changed into the same image we give you the glory in Jesus name amen Isaiah chapter 33 verse number 6 I'll run very quickly and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation the fear of the Lord is his treasure we can start from the verse 5 I was expecting you to read with me let's start from the verse 5 one to go the Lord is exalted for he dwelleth on high he has filled Zion with judgment and righteousness verse 6 and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation the fear of the Lord is his treasure the Lord is exalted he dwelleth on high and he has filled Zion with righteousness and then it continues to say that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. Somebody say the stability. The stability of the times and strength of salvation. That means that in Zion you will be saved. But your salvation doesn't mean that there is stability. It will take knowledge for people's salvation to be stable. For people to experience the things that accompany salvation. For that thing to be stable in their lives. So they get wisdom. And wisdom is permanent. They encounter the glory of God. And it's permanent. If you don't have knowledge. You may think that God swingles. Because at the end of the day. You experience a glory of salvation. Today and tomorrow. You experience a different thing. I'm coming to teach you certain things about this salvation gift of salvation you've received but it's important to know that you need this knowledge to enjoy salvation otherwise salvation will be a, a very frustrating journey for you the bible says that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of the times and then the strength of salvation that means there are some people who are going to experience weak salvation and there are those that are going to experience very strong salvation. They got born again and it looks like God is seated in their home. Everything is working for them. You may not understand. The Bible says the difference is knowledge. Isaiah 53 verse 11. Isaiah 53 verse number 11. He shall see the... Can we all read one to go? He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge somebody shout that part well by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities look at that please Say what co school, say who co school, you are not exempted. Say who nim Christo and what year who nim dia a busia obe bre. Obex na sorry them so be bre. Bible say he shall see of the travail of his soul. What is the travail of the soul of Christ? The church. So every agony he went through a day like this on Good Friday, the pain. The shame, the nakedness, the testiness, the hunger, all the 
rejection, the betrayal. He says that he will see the fruits of that travail. And he will be satisfied. And how is he going to be satisfied? That means the only satisfaction Jesus has is that people come out of his pain. That's the church. And he said, how is it going to happen? By his knowledge. By his knowledge. By his knowledge. He shall justify many. Because he will bear their iniquities. By his knowledge. Please get it well. The more people know him, the more they are justified. The more people know him. Do you know what justification is? To be free from charges. So every sin you have ever committed, you don't mention that sin to be justified. You mention Christ to be justified. He said, by his knowledge, many shall be justified because he will bear their iniquities. Come on. You did the sin. But the day you have knowledge that he's ready to bear it, that's the day you'll be justified. I know you have been through many things in life. I know you have been the horrible person. You have been a very terrible person. You have been the worst person the family knows. You have been the worst person that your community knows. But he says that by his knowledge, many people shall be justified and this is how it's going to happen the more they know him the more he bears their iniquities that's why the bible said that if you confess the lord jesus confess the lord jesus he didn't say confess your sins he said confess the lord jesus it is not by the knowledge of your sin you'll be justified it's by the knowledge of jesus am i talking to a church here at all this is how you gain stability. This is how you break out of addiction. This is how you break out of sin. You don't break out of sin because you know you are sinning. You break out of sin the day you begin to know Jesus. The bearer of sins. This is the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. Oh. Is somebody ready for today? Hebrews chapter 5. Verse number 7. speaking about Jesus who in the days of his flesh when he has offered up prayers and supplications with strong cries and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard that he feared that was a time like this in Gethsemane he, he cried because he feared to die he cried because he was in agony to die and the Bible is describing him. And then verse 8. Though he were a son, he yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Verse 9. Made perfect, he became... Come on, come on. This is, this is, this is our deal here. One to go. And being made perfect, he became the author of... Temporal salvation, two days salvation, one week salvation. He became the author of what? Eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Then he's coming to show you not by the order of Aaron, but by the order of Melchizedek. Go ahead, move, move, move quickly. Uh huh. Called of God and high priest after the order of what? Then verse 11, one to go, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. He's describing Jesus. He said, this one is the author of eternal salvation. After the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say, things that are hard to utter, we can't say it because you are dull of hearing. You don't want to hear. You want three days, I'll break through. But he said, this one is the author of your salvation. Then he continues to say that when you have to be teachers, you still demand that we teach you the basic oracles of God and the first principles of God. Then he said, you are still babies desiring for milk 
for strong meat is for them that are able to discern and exercise their senses unto discerning evil and good. This is why I want you to understand. When the apostle wanted to write to a church, he said, I have some wild things to say about your eternal salvation. But you are not ready for meat. So he said, we have stopped. Grace Mountain, are we ready? Yes. Oh, come on. Are we ready? Yes. We can close now. I can just take a microphone and start declaring. Then one or two people will land the miracle and we say the service was powerful. But if we want everybody here to land the miracle, we must have a knowledge of him. We must have a knowledge of him. Where do we begin from? The great salvation that came through the great offering. Now I'm starting my message. Leviticus 17 verse 11. Leviticus 17 verse 11. Ah, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar. Why are you afraid of English? Please, let's read again. The life of the flesh <laughs> is inside the blood. Then you see, God tells us what he will use the blood to do because there is life in the blood. He said he has given every blood to us for altar sake. Because life is in the blood. You see, everything Satan is doing today is a photocopy of what he saw God do. In the latter part of my message, if God gives me time, I will explain to you why you are poor and why you are sick and why a particular case is refusing to leave you. Then you know it all has to do with blood issues. Because the life is in the blood. That means that what makes me Elvis is not my height. It's not, in fact, there is something in the blood that is contributing to the height. There is something in the blood that is contributing to the color. So there is two dimensions of the life that is in the blood. We have the physical dimension. So if you go to the hospital right now, the doctor will tell you it's true. You are surviving by your blood. Why? Because blood transports oxygen. So without the blood, you can't get correct distribution of oxygen in the body. So they will look at the physical perspective of it. That it is the blood that transports digested food into your body parts. So you need the blood because there is, it contains what keeps your body surviving. That's very powerful. That's a physical dimension. It contains the codes, the DNA, the RNA, the genetic codes of your body. That's very powerful. But God was not talking about that dimension of life. There is another dimension of life. It's the spirit dimension of life that is resident in a man's blood. And God is saying that for the life of the flesh is inside the blood. What makes me who I am is inside the blood. And God said, I have given you blood for all that sick. So anytime you present blood to me, that point becomes a point, a point of meeting between me, a spirit, and you, a flesh. Then God tells us what he will use that to do. He said that any time you present blood to me, I establish an altar with you. And that altar has an essence 
of atoning for your souls. So when you bring a blood to me and I'm angry with you, the anger and the wrath sift from you to the blood. That is what I want. I want the purpose I want blood to serve between you and I is that it will always build an order so that I will shift my anger from you to that blood that you are presenting. But along the way, when man missed it with God, something began to happen. When the devil realized that life is in the blood, he also started raising altars through blood. So whenever somebody else produces blood in a way, then suddenly a spirit from nowhere can also come and contact it. That is why you can study that what happened to your ancestor will happen to another one and come and happen to you. Why? It's not about you. It's in the blood. It moves. The life of your grandfather was in his blood. He transferred it to your father and your father transfers to you. It goes. It's a lineage. Sir, don't, don't take it lightly. What is in me? And the kind of altar I raise in my blood will come after my son. And I, after a while, I'll tell you how to raise altars through the blood. Then you understand how some men like Abraham and the rest raise altars through their blood and it transferred to us. But I want you to quickly get an understanding to that greatest altar that was raised on Calvary Cross. And when it gets to a point, maybe I'll deviate a bit. And then we will understand why some of you are in war and where the war must be targeted. That it has to do with your blood. So you can raise a prayer against any strange life that is functioning in your blood. Is somebody here with me at all? We will soon raise a short war against the strange lies that is struggling through our blood. But before that, I want you to understand what happened to us when Jesus Christ came to raise a higher altar on Calvary Cross. What is the essence of Jesus shedding his blood for mankind? What happened to us? The Bible says that the life in the blood is placed on the altar for the purpose of atonement. And when you see it, you realize that that means that the first reason for the death of Jesus and the sacrifice of Jesus was for the purpose of atonement. Somebody write it down and never forget it. Never forget it. If you forget it, you feel your, your, your salvation will be weak. And you will not be stable. Atonement. What is atonement? I'll be very fast though. If you don't follow me. What is atonement? There are some of you who are happy. This is the Lamb of God. That taketh away the sins of the world. Oh, Jesus died for me. The blood of Jesus has bought me. Now, do, you, do you understand what you sing about? He says that the life of a, 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 an animal is in the blood and therefore it is brought on the altar for atonement for it is the blood that makes it atonement for your soul. The word atonement in the Greek comes with several words and one of them is exchange. So anytime a blood is carried on an altar you have gone to exchange. something for you if you don't understand this you'll be around and you may think that you are responsible for your life if you don't want to accept this cancel your christianity you have not begun yet it's an insult to the sacrifice of christ if you still believe that you are responsible for your life in the kingdom atonement means exchange exchange another soul for a soul the bible says that the soul that sinners he will die i 
deserve to die. I deserve to go to hell. I deserve to be sick. I sinned. I am a sinner. I deserve to sin. But there is a room with God that if anybody can pay your price, let a person come. So you are saying you need to die. But God is not strict about the fact that the one that sins should be the one to be punished. He says that anytime you sin and you get, you get another blood, there is life in that blood. Bring that blood. And I will rather strike that blood instead of you. <laughs> Listen. And then the Bible said that this is the lamp of God that taketh away the sins of this world. Do you understand that? So Jesus just came on earth purposely to exchange our his place for our place his righteousness for our sin his blessing for our curse his glory for our shame his strength for our weaknesses that is what jesus came to do he that knew no sin was made sin that you shall be the righteousness of god how do you want to understand that? Second Corinthians 5 21. He that knew no sin, that is the exchange. That another blood comes on the altar to exchange for your soul. Sir, you won't go to heaven because you are right. You are going to heaven because Jesus has changed hell for you. Don't make a mess of yourself. That's why in this kingdom, you can never talk about you without talking about him. Come on. So he says something. Like in the days of Noah, so shall the days of the son of man be. In the days of Noah. Do you want to understand the days of Noah? Get to understand how the ark looks like and how the ark was built. You understand how the days of Noah looks like. Both the clean and the unclean walked in. They were unclean, but as long as they remained in the ark, they were safe. <laughs> Listen. The Bible is very clear on salvation. You cannot... Listen, we can continue with our condemnation mindset. We can continue with our attack mindset, but it does not change the truth. If you understand what atonement is about, we are only insulting the sacrifice of Jesus. If you don't know that from today, it's not about Pastor Paul. It's about someone that died for him. It's not about him. Do you know that the Bible was very clear that in the ark of Noah was painted inside and outside with a pitch? A pitch. Go and look at the Hebrew word for pitch. Hebrew word for pitch, kofar. It means another word for that Hebrew word for pitch is asphalt. Another word is ransom. Another word is exchange. Another word is atonement. Is somebody here with me? That's, that's what covered the ark. Another word is covering. So what the Bible was saying is that anyone that entered the ark, his soul has been exchanged. So let the flood kill everybody, but not those in the ark. That's what atonement is about. And you have to be confident over this truth. I may be weak sometimes. I may be strong sometimes. I may feel anointed sometimes. I may feel unanointed sometimes. There are times that I will feel the presence of God. There are times that I may not feel the presence of God. But that does not change the fact that I'm safe in the ark. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Wait. When the angel of death, you already know the Bible says that what happened in Egypt is a figure. Sir, when 
the angel of death was passing by, did he check who is in the room? What did he check? <laughs> to him, to him, everyone in the room and every door with the blood means that the one in the room is dead. Come on. Blood means that the one in the room is dead. You can't kill a dead man. Do you know what it means? The Bible says that we were dead together with Christ. The moment you present blood, that means that this is death. This has taken away my penalty. So I'm as dead as this blood I'm showing you. There's it. You can't punish somebody twice. If God wanted to kill you for your sins, he wouldn't have killed his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed, how do I believe? I must believe that he's my exchange. That's a condition. The devil is shipping the church because we don't know. By knowledge shall the son of man justify many. By knowledge, I'm free from every, every dominion of sin because I know this. I know this. I know it. It's deep within my heart. I don't need to look into books to preach it. It's here. I know it. It's in my heart. It's right here. And they Recently I was teaching this. That do you know the meaning of lot? Lot means a veil or a covering. And the Bible says that as in the days of Lot, so shall be the days of the Son of Man. Have you not realized that Lot was connected to Abraham, a figure of Christ? Because of that, when the first captivity came, because of Lot, deliverance came. Abraham came and delivered them. That was Jesus coming for the first time to deliver the world on the cross. Then he goes again, leaving Lot together with Sodom. That is how he died and went and said, I do not pray that you take them out of this world. Let them be together with the world whilst I go. Then when over time, the sins of Sodom reached heaven, God came. And the Bible says that the day the angels took the hands of Lot and took him out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone. That means as long as Lot is there, the whole world was safe. The whole of Sodom was safe. And he, look at that. The church is the covering of the world. The day the rapture will happen, when the angels of the Lord will gather us, that is the day judgment will hit the world. That's the day judgment. Look at that. This is to tell us, was, was Lot that perfect? No. But a certain Abraham was interceding for him. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7, seeing wherefore that he interceded for us, so he's able to save to the uttermost. He's able to save to the uttermost. He's able to save to the uttermost all day that come to him. Seeing that he make an intercession for them. He's able to save to the uttermost. My God, he's able to save to the uttermost. So if this is the journey to heaven, the Bible says Jesus is able to save you even to the day of your going to heaven because he make an intercession for you. This is how Abraham made intercession for Lord. Our atonement. Our exchange has a very I don't know how to let you understand this. Verse 22, verse 1 and 2. This is a fool that's become a prophecy. I'm overpaid.